It's time to talk about dark matter once again, mostly because we have some really exciting observational evidence discovered in a distant cluster, along with a somewhat intriguing study that tries to explain one of the more unusual observations from the JWST as a potential sign for either unusual dark matter or dark matter-based cosmic web. Here we're talking about these unusual banana galaxies. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these recent discoveries from just the last few weeks, talk about what they mean and why they're important, and obviously discuss some potential alternatives. But I guess first, before we start, well, for the past few months, there's really just been more and more actual physical evidence that this unusual dark matter phenomenon, responsible for something like 85% of all of the mass in the universe, more and more likely seems to be some kind of a particle. Not a quirk in a formula, not some kind of a misinterpretation or some kind of a bias, but really a bizarre particle that seems to only interact with things with gravity and nothing else. And obviously we have no idea what kind of a particle, and obviously it's also been never really discovered anywhere here on planet Earth, but as you might have learned from some of the previous videos about various anomalies, there have been quite a few signs here and there. One of the more recent videos about the gallium anomaly actually presents one of the potential candidates, the so-called sterile neutrino. But in this video we're not really going to speculate about what particle it is, or I guess what mass it has, or what it looks like and so on. We're just going to discuss some of the physical observational evidence discovered by various telescopes. And here let's actually start with one of the more complex observations in the last few years. Something that was actually done using a multi-probe observation using a variety of telescopes and a variety of frequencies. And here the focus was on this unusual galactic cluster. Technically this is actually two clusters that are colliding with each other. And these are two really huge clusters that collided billions of years ago, resulting in some really unexpected and somewhat difficult observations that were finally explained. Now in general, when it comes to collisions, these galactic cluster collisions are technically some of the most powerful and some of the most energetic events ever since the Big Bang. They produce an enormous amount of energy, visible in a variety of frequencies. Here are just some of these observations conducted in the last few years. Now normally these collisions are not very easy to detect, so there's actually just a handful we know of, but that handful has been studied very thoroughly by a lot of scientists. And in pretty much most of these observations, Usually we observe these clusters basically kind of from the side. But here you'll notice something really unusual. There are two separate colors, but these two colors seem to be in somewhat different locations. This is actually the famous bullet cluster. And here, 3.8 billion years ago, the collision in this cluster that contains hundreds and hundreds of galaxies produced an observable separation of normal matter visible here in pink and observable through various X-ray interactions mostly because it produces a lot of superheated collisions, which essentially produce very hot X-rays, but also very powerful gravitational effects visible through gravitational lensing, in this case visible in blue. And that gravitational lensing effect seems to be formed by an extremely massive invisible matter. Yet it seems to be separated from those two clusters and seems to be moving slightly faster away from everything else. In other words, even though the gas is still moving here too, that invisible matter is moving just a little bit faster as visible by these gravitational lensing effects. And that's actually why this unusual bullet cluster has always been a kind of a telltale sign for the existence of this invisible dark matter. It would be very difficult to explain this in pretty much any other way. And these very similar observations have been detected in a lot of other places. And so this is basically something that's been known to us for a relatively long time. But in this case, as I mentioned, you are kind of looking at this from the side. But in certain situations, like in this situation, something weird has been detected and did not actually make sense at first. Now once again this is based on a multi-probe observation using a variety of different frequencies, and specifically seven most powerful telescopes that we currently have. But the initial observations basically suggested that the dark matter was actually headed in the completely opposite direction from the regular matter. Or essentially it appeared as if dark matter bounced off something and moved elsewhere. But apparently this was actually just a visual trick. And in reality we are actually looking at this from a completely face on perspective. And in this case the only reason it appears to be moving in the opposite direction is because once again the regular gas here is slowing down and the dark matter is not stopping and moving really fast. 
And so if we were to somehow see this from the side, it would once again basically look like this. Here the dark matter is in blue, the normal matter is in orange. And so because of that 90 degree orientation, relative to a lot of other clusters, we're just seeing the effects a little bit different. But nevertheless, once again, this shows us the same thing. The regular matter slows down, the dark matter keeps going. An exciting opportunity to see all of this from a different perspective. And in this case, one of the first calculations was in trying to establish the velocities required for all of this, matching them to previous models, and basically comparing this to various simulations from before. And there does seem to be a bit of a discrepancy. Even though there are very powerful shocks produced and a lot of X-rays, this collision is only approximately 3000 km per second, but the predicted value was at least twice as high. Which implies that some of these older models and older calculations may have to be reworked. But intriguingly, everything else so far seems to match almost perfectly. As a matter of fact, every single observation here can be explained using this model and thus almost definitively once again proves the existence of this dark matter particle. It would be practically impossible to explain the gravitational ending and the X-ray effects in pretty much any other way. And especially because we definitely see this in so many different clusters. Here's one of the most famous and most well-known examples. The largest cluster known to us, El Gordo. And here too we see the direct separation of matter and dark matter, mostly because the center of mass producing gravitational lensing effects seems to be shifted to the left on one side and to the right on the other side. But it's not in the same location as the rest of the gas. And to the scientists studying this, this just has one explanation. At the moment, nobody has been able to provide anything better than a tiny invisible particle. I mean, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but so far it seems to work. But apart from this detection, we actually have something else coming from the older observations from the Hubble telescope and the newer observations from the James Webb. And it's something we've discussed in one of the older videos from the initial and unusual James Webb observations. And so back in 1990s, when the Hubble telescope just started observing the universe, it actually kept discovering these unusual elongated galaxies in some of the most distant locations away from us. And this actually was difficult to explain because before this, the assumption was that most galaxies possibly start as something more symmetrical and eventually become galaxies like the Milky Way or galaxies like M87. But here they found a lot of bizarre elongated shapes, some actually resembling bananas. And so they were nicknamed banana galaxies. And though James Webb was supposed to resolve this by possibly seeing beyond them or discovering why they're so elongated, in the end JWST seems to have discovered even more. Strange, misshapen galaxies that instead of being more spherical were very elongated, with many of them appearing pretty much the same way if they were discovered somewhere in the first 5 billion years of the existence of the universe. But there was a natural explanation. Maybe, just like before, this was just a gravitational lensing effect. So basically something in the vicinity, maybe once again dark matter, was making these galaxies appear slightly more banana shaped, but in reality they were not. And so in one of the recent studies the scientists did two things. First they tried to see if this makes sense, and second they tried to propose an alternative explanation. And turns out gravitational lensing does not explain any of this. None of this would produce a strong enough effect to make these galaxies appear so banana shaped. And so in reality, they might actually have this unusual shape after all. And the question is, why? And well, obviously the answer was dark matter. I mean, you're watching a dark matter video after all, so you know, what did you expect? But the actual explanation is a little bit more intriguing. And so the first assumption here was that maybe the dark matter is stretching them in such unusual ways, just because a lot of it is present nearby, with many of these galaxies becoming misshapen as a result. But this was kind of difficult to prove. A much more intriguing proposition was, okay, what if they're actually misshapen like this because they're technically positioned along the mysterious cosmic web, which is technically explained by various simulations and is also one of the main propositions when it comes to the evolution of the universe. And turns out that proving that was maybe possible and slightly easier. And so here to try to make sense of this, the researchers looked at the orientation of all of these galaxies comparing them to some of the galaxies nearby. And specifically they wanted to see if a lot of these galaxies would be kind of more or less randomly distributed, which is of course what's assumed if there's no effect from anything, and if these galaxies are elongated by entirely local effects, and so basically here the average orientation would be equal to zero, or if these galaxies were somehow statistically aligned. 
All of this was done by looking at many different pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope and measuring the average orientation for each of the galaxies. And well, it turns out that they are actually aligned in somewhat similar ways if they're located nearby, which implied that a lot of this stretchiness was actually the result of some kind of a gravitational effect and, once again, most likely dark matter. But in this case, dark matter from within that cosmic web. And so here we have evidence for not just dark matter, but also the existence of the cosmic web once again. Or at least that's one of the best explanations for now. Interestingly enough, this is not the first time such unusual correlations have been seen before, and in one of the older videos we've discussed the unusual correlation between various quasars, once again billions of light years away from us, and their positioning along the cosmic web as well. And so this could be a very similar effect. The orientation and the stretchiness, or I guess these banana shapes, are produced as a result of various materials and various gas moving through the cosmic web and stretching some of these galaxies in certain ways. Although additional analysis also revealed that it's most likely to be produced by a kind of a warm or possibly even wave type of dark matter as opposed to the cold dark matter proposed by most scientists. And so the actual type of dark matter, or once again, what kind of a particle this is, is not something we can answer right now. These are just observations and potential explanations, and so we're not going to have any more details until someone else sees something else and provides additional evidence. But because in this case it could still be some kind of a bias, or possibly a problem with observational evidence, there could be alternative explanations. And so here, once we get more evidence from telescopes like Euclid, or even more images from the James Webb, we'll probably have a much better idea on what's going on. But until then, these are still super exciting discoveries, providing us with even more confirmation for the existence of this unusual mystery, bizarre anomaly, known as dark matter. But unfortunately, once again, no explanation on what it actually is. But once we have more info, once there are some additional updates, or someone finds even crazier galaxies out there, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.